for everybody that has literally been crying that there is no Phosphor Todoroki in the game. He is on his way. It is time to get hyped. This guy looks very, very interesting. Now, honestly, his kit, I'm a little bit worried about. I, 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 nobody wants them to mess up this character, right? But I, I just don't know how I feel about him. I'll explain it when we go through his kit. But before we get into his kit, before we dive into this character, we need to talk about all the other stuff that has come with this latest update of the game. So starting with the gift box items, you are going to get 50 free hero gems as a thank you for cooperating with maintenance. Normally we see more items like from Twitter campaigns and stuff like this right here. But the reason we don't is because we're going to be getting a lot, like a lot, a lot of hero gems from login bonuses. So that is definitely something you guys are gonna wanna look forward to because that is actually so hype. And we'll go over what those login bonuses are here in a second, of course. But before we do that, drop rate up campaigns. You can see all the different drop rate up campaigns we have coming up. A lot of these are going to be for the main quest times three. The other stuff, the USJ hero base, we don't really care about those, right? Don't ever really. The only ones that matter are going to be main quest and VE tower. VE tower because the metals times three drop rates on VE tower is actually pretty good, but everything else just don't worry about it. Don't worry about looking at it. So keep that in mind. But a bunch of main quest times three right here. And we got a VE tower times three as well. And then a main quest times two. Unfortunately, no main quest times five anytime soon. So take advantage of the times three while you can because uh, the times two is just not great at all. But the times three will be going from 1026 to 1027. And then it will also be going from 11.2 to 11.4. So take advantage of those times three drop rates while you can uh, when you want to work on character ability boards to get your characters leveled up. And then for VE Tower, we do have one coming up right here from 1031 until 11 one. So that's actually uh, a decent amount of time right there to get your VE Tower medals. I don't think, we, yeah, we don't have any more VE Tower ones. So those are the main drop rate up campaigns that you want to pay attention to when you guys are logging into the game here coming up in the next few days. Now, besides that, we also have some missions in the game that are currently in the game. And so these missions are going to award you different things like hero gems, a new background for your home screen, which I think is really cool, except the background is just a recolor of a background we got in previous years. So, I mean, like it, it's, it, I like the new color scheme, but they couldn't even come up with a new background. Like, come on, but like some hero gems, other things decent, right? The memory tonics level up bars, eh, who really cares? But the, the background here is cool and the hero gems are cool. So the background is going to look something like this. Uh, we had a color scheme last year that was like the same exact art, but it was kind of purplish and you might've seen it in my recent videos. I kind of almost like the previous years better, but for anyone that's been asking, how do you get the Halloween background? Well, here you go. Here's how you can get the Halloween background. All you have to do is go and set all mites on your home screen as one of the characters, and then it will unlock this background for you and you can equip it. So. There you go, something to look forward to at least. I wish they did like more things to unlock wallpapers because everybody loves wallpapers. It was like a big thing in Dokkan too. When we didn't have wallpapers for a long time, people wanted wallpapers. And then they finally started coming out with wallpapers, but it's limited on how fast they do. If if games just like did more wallpapers, honestly, it'd make people happy. So uh, I would like to see more wallpapers in my Hero Ultra Impact in the future, but we'll see if that ever happens. Now for the login bonus campaigns, we're actually gonna be getting three of these, okay? So this first one is gonna go from October 23rd, which that is what it is today, all the way until November 7th. You have until then to claim these rewards. So on day one, you will get 50 free hero gems. On day two, you will get 150 stamina. On day three, you will get 100 hero gems. On day four, you will get 150 stamina. On day five, you will get 150 hero gems. On day six, you will get two 200 stamina and on day seven you will get another 200 hero gems that is a pretty nice little login bonus right there and then for the halloween login bonus round two day uh this will be going from october 23rd until the 7th as well so once the uh I, I believe once the first one ends, you get this one. They might be going at the same time, though. I actually haven't logged into the game to see. But list of rewards, HP Flakes times 10 on day one. Day two, Power Protein times 10 on day three. 20 Hero Gems, day four. Super Gadget times one, day five. 
speed jelly times 10, day six, top hero device times one, and day seven, 50 hero gems. So pretty decent right there. And then we get to the third login bonus, the JP 3.5 year anniversary countdown login bonus. So this one will be going from November 1st up until November 13th. And on day one, you'll get 20 hero gems. Day two, you'll get 100 stamina. Day three, you'll get 30 hero gems. Day four, you'll get a super gadget. Day five, you'll get 40 hero gems. Day six, you will get a top hero device. And day seven, you will get another 50 hero gems. So being very generous in my opinion with the uh, rewards that are coming up and giving us a lot of hero gems, I'm sure a lot of free to play players will love that. But if you're not a free to play player, well, they also have sales coming up. So we have the It's Halloween super special sale now on. I don't know if these are necessarily going to be worth it. This one right here probably might be, but like typically these ones in packs aren't super great. Like this one might be okay because it's an alpha, a beta, and a gamma orb will get your character completely finished. Plus some advanced leveling items, plus three multis. Like it's not, it's probably not terrible, but it's probably still like 80 bucks for this. So I mean, I don't know. It might be worth it to the right person. Hard to say, but yeah, we'll have to see what the pricing is on these but they, they look like decent packs, right? The fact that they're including advanced leveling items now with the orbs makes me, that's a little bit better. That's better than it has been. So I'm happy with that. And then additionally, we're going to get the JP 3.5 year anniversary countdown sales. These will probably start in November. We don't have an exact date, I believe for when these start around the same times I imagine the login bonuses do, uh, but you'll be able to get these different packs. This is the typical packs we see. So this right here, like this is probably 500 hero gems for 1199 typically is what it is. And I would say this one's like the best one to buy because that's like the best bang for your buck. But that's just my opinion. So spend as you guys see fit or don't spend if you're free to play, you know, do what you, you do, you do whatever you want to do there. And now we get into the banners. So we have some relaunch banners coming up. It's actually going to be in a day here, a very, very soon when these banners relaunch. So we have this one right here, featuring Deku and Uraraka as the poster characters. And then we have this one with Bakugo and Todoroki as the poster characters. However, do not let this mislead you because there are more than just these two fantasy characters on the banner. And it's actually kind of good if you're looking to get a level 130 fantasy character potentially if you don't have all of these characters 130 it's really bad if you have like two out of the three at 130 because then you might end up pulling them again so just keep that in mind but it is a step up banner for both of these banners which is kind of cool and it is good to mention that on these step up banners you're getting a ton of stars you're getting 150 stars for one rotation of doing these step ups i consider that pretty dang good and then the biggest thing though the biggest biggest thing like 10 limit breaker fragments here and five UR limit breaker fragments here. That is 15 out of the 20 you need to limit break a UR memory for free. That's pretty dang good. So the steps are pretty decent in my opinion. The rewards are pretty decent for the steps. Um, and then the characters that are featured, you have Deku, you have Uraraka, you have Su, you have Kirishima and you have Aizawa on this banner. Uh, all very good characters still to this day. They all still have their uses. I would say out of the ones here, the one that's fallen off the most is probably Kirishima. The ones that have the most use still are probably this Uraraka and this Aizawa. So those would be the ones to go for to get to 130. So once again, if you don't have any of them at 130, this is a good banner for you because you could potentially pull any of them and you'd be happy with it, right? But if you have like three of the five at 130, then you're gonna be like, yeah, I don't necessarily want to summon on this banner. Additionally, for the Bakugo banner, it is the same way, same type of rewards there. And then you got Bakugo, Ida, Todoroki, Loki, Kaminari, and Jiro on this banner. I would say Jiro is still very, very good. And uh, I don't know, the rest of them have all kind of fallen off a little bit. Like they all have their uses, but Jiro is the main one to pull for. So if you were to ask me which banner is technically better, I would say this banner is probably better because you still have Uraraka who has a lot of uses and you still have Aizawa who has a lot of uses is at least two out of the five characters. Whereas this banner has like one really good character. All these characters are decent, but like, the characters who haven't completely fallen off, Jiro, uh, Aizawa, and Uraraka. So if you're gonna summon on any banner, I would probably summon on this one right here, just my recommendation, but of course summon for whichever characters are your favorite and whatever characters you want to work on. Now, besides those two banners, we do have the new banner for Todoroki, the wildly chaotic traffic safety class recruit. So we get a new SR memory, a new UR memory, and then of course the new Phosphor Todoroki. He's not actually called that in the game, but 
That's what we're gonna be calling it for the sake of simplicity. So let's talk about the event memory that comes out alongside this banner first. So the event memory is called Provoking Fury, Fury if I could speak. Um, future and picky here and so when equipped by a ua high class 1a character increases character's power by 30 percent and defense by 20 percent after three turns pass while character is making a last stand cancels one of the character's temporary status ailments and then you can see here that of course it is future and pinky and the art team always killing it canceling a temporary status elements decent de like defense is decent power is decent right but i don't i i just don't know where we would ever really use this once again it's an sr memory that's probably not going to find a lot of uses if i'm being completely honest but if you're a collector for the art like myself well there you go the new summonable sr memory is cursing reveals weakness this art i it looks sick it looks like look at look at the art look at the art man and you're telling me this isn't a ur memory this is an sr memory that's absolutely crazy i think it's so good anyways the effect for this one increases character's power by 20 percent when equipped by a hero character increases character's power by 10 percent if there are any ua high class 1a characters on the team also increases character's power by eight percent after receiving two attacks from a villain up to five times so 38 percent increase in power I mean, like, that's all this memory does is increase power. It could potentially be good because what, whatever, eight times five is uh, 40%, right? So you're getting 40 uh, plus 30, 70%, potentially 70% power increase. That actually might be the most power increase like a memory has had, and it doesn't look like it goes away. It doesn't say for a set amount of turns, right? So you can get up to a 70% power increase. This could actually make characters hit really hard. This might be a like a really slept on memory. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think we've ever seen a power increase of 70%. If I'm doing that math right, that, that could be really, really strong. Granted, it takes a couple of hits to get it going and it has to be specifically by a villain you have to receive two attacks from a villain up to five times like that that might be hard to achieve but given the right stage the right circumstances maybe the right ve tower that could be very uh potentially very useful so i i think that memory is interesting i don't know where it's going to find uses but i do think it has potential i will say that now for the ur memory not so fast when character is in a state of tranquility <laughs> tranquility is interesting it makes it so uh you can't be hit by crits but it also makes it so the what is it oh tranquility it's something to do with crits i believe it's like yeah it's so you can't be hit by crits but you also can't land crits that's what it is i was like what is it in my brain that's what it is you can't land crits and you also can't be hit by crits though so when character is in a state of tranquility increases character skill impact by 35 percent and power by 35 percent after one turn passes while character is in a state of tranquility gives character the ability to nullify status elements for one turn up to two times so this right here this memory is definitely 100 percent designed for the new Todoroki because he does not have the ability to nullify status elements but he has literally everything else everything else he needs to be a halfway decent character so that ability to nullify status elements is nice and i would say probably almost necessary on this character and then the extra skill impact and power is also very very good for him because remember uh this new Todoroki is going to have tranquility so that means you won't be able to hit crits so you want more skill impact and more power to make up for the fact that you're not going to be able to hit crits which i find very interesting and then of course we have the art right here i almost feel like the sr art is better i don't know that's just me let me know what you guys think down in the comments i like the sr art more in this particular case that happens once in a while and this is one of those times now this is the new todoroki it's actually called freezing impact we're just going to call it phosphor because that's better uh and we got the unawakened art and we got the awakened art for my boy and we'll take a look at his plus ultra animation here at the end of the video but let's go through his kit let's talk a little bit about what he can do what he can't do and whether i think he's going to be a good character or not so first off he is a general pool character keep that in mind his plus ultra move is called a great glacial eiger hopefully i'm saying that right if i'm not I apologize. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 30% when character is in a state of tranquility. This is stackable. So every time he plus ultras, he is going to be increasing his skill impact by 30% for his plus ultra move. That's decent. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. We'll have to see. But basically as the battle goes on, he'll get stronger and stronger for his plus ultra turns. Deals 600% damage to a single opponent with a medium chance 50% of giving them frostbite for three turns and a low chance 30% of freezing them for two turns. A two turn freeze is really good by the way and gives character a barrier that nullifies two hits. And I just thought of something. If 
if his freeze, so typically when you freeze somebody, it guarantees a crit. Will we still land? Will we then be able to land crits if we freeze people, even though with Tranquility we're not supposed to be able to land hits? I haven't actually paid attention to that. We'll have to see. But uh, giving character a barrier is fine in this particular case. It nullifies two hits on the plus ultra turn because enemy plus ultras typically do not have multi-hit attacks. So that will be good for blocking at least two plus two plus ultras. So that's actually, normally I say barriers are not super great um, when it comes to like going against multi-hit action skill attacks. But when it's on a plus ultra turn, those barriers are actually pretty good if he is faster than the enemy team and he's able to get those barriers up before they plus ultra. So that's actually fairly decent. Action skill one, Flash Fire Fist Phosphor gives all allies tranquility for three turns. So this is what I find interesting. He is going to make it so your allies can't be hit by crits, but then also make it so they can't land crits. And I am pretty sure I'm not making this up. If I were to pull up tranquility, I'll, sh I'll show you guys here in a second. I'll show you the tranquility effect, but that that I'm pretty sure that's how tranquility works, unless I'm crazy. So uh, yeah, you won't be able to land crits. They won't be able to land crits. It's just whoever has the stronger character, which is interesting. Interesting. Interesting that he does that for the whole team, right? For three turns. When used in a successfully executed skill chain, cancels two of the character's temporary status ailments and increases character's plus ultra gauge by 10%. I don't really care about canceling temporary status ailments. If it gave him the ability to nullify status ailments for the following like two turns, that'd be better. Canceling status ailments has never been very great. Increasing plus ultra gauge is decent. Also increases character's power by 30% for three turns. Cooldown time of four. Both of his skills have a four turn cooldown, so he could fit in virtually any team, making him actually a fairly decent character. That is not an attack skill though, so keep in mind the fact that he is lacking an attack skill right here is interesting as well. His action skill two is a Cold Flames Pale Blade. Deals 400% damage to a single opponent with a low chance 30% of giving them Frostbite for two turns. So this is one of the first Tartarokis in a while to not have an AoE attack. Okay, he has one attack here, a single target attack. He has a single target attack on his plus ultra and no attack here on this action skill. So keep that in mind. But yeah, dealing 400% damage is decent with a low chance of getting the frostbite for two turns. Frostbite is actually very good in PvP because it interrupts skill chains if you're able to land it. And then when character is in a state of tranquility, reduces damage to character by 20% for two turns. So that could be potentially really good on like a plus ultra turn. And then when character is in a state of tranquility, increases this skill's skill impact by by 40%. So this is like the whole idea I believe behind the Todoroki is to give him a bunch of power, a bunch of skill impact and a bunch of like damage to make up for the fact that you're not going to hit crits and he'll potentially become one of the hardest hitting characters on a team or in in a, any given match really. Considering you're taking away crits from the enemy team and crits from your own team, he will be able to hit the hardest out of anyone. So when he's in a state of tranquility, extra skill impact by 40%. And then when used in a successfully executed skill chain, decreases defense of a single opponent by 20% for three turns. That is also really good because anytime you can decrease an opponent's defense, it's just going to help your other characters do more damage. It's going to help you in the future turns, like if it's a plus ultra turn, to do more damage. His auto skill one the will to climb over that wall gives all allies tranquility for two turns up to one time. This will be at the start of battle. This buff cannot be canceled or blocked. So very, from the very start of the battle, you're going to have tranquility. After two turns pass while character is in a state of tranquility, increases character skill impact by 30% up to two times and max HP by 25% up to two times and gives character freeze counter for three turns where freeze counter has a low chance of inflicting freeze for two turns on the opponent when they attack and gives character a barrier that nullifies two hits up to three times. So starting off the battle with a barrier, starting off the battle with freeze counter, starting off the battle with extra skill impact and extra max HP, it's solid. It's very, very good. And then gives all allies tranquility for two turns. One character knocks out an opponent. That's just like the icy on top. Like, I guess that that's cool. I, it, it's nice. I guess it, we, it's not necessary, but it's nice. So lots of ways to give yourself and allies tranquility. And then for auto skill two, output beyond my limit when character is in a state of tranquility gives character piercing shots so there's the extra damage and increases character's speed by 50 percent so starting out the battle with a 50 percent speed increase we love that that is very good and then gives character a barrier that nullifies two hits up to one time gives character resilience when character's hp is below 50 percent and when character is in a state of tranquility increases burning freezing and frostbite resistances of all allies he looks very 
very good as far as general pool units go in my opinion in terms of the overall support and the damage that he's potentially going to be able to do with his plus ultra and with this skill now i will say i don't know if this one is going to be a multi-hit attack if it's a multi-hit attack i'll say it's okay but like if you just have a single target attack here and a single target attack here it's great that you're going to be able to do a lot of damage but if they have evasion if they have barriers well i guess barriers don't matter because you'll have pierce but if they have evasion then your skills just don't matter right so hopefully you're going against a team that does have evasion or you have another character on your team that can land bullseyes before Todoroki goes that way he can actually make use of his damage so keep that in mind but this Todoroki looks very very good and once again this memory on him will be very useful because it gives him the one thing he's lacking which is the ability to nullify status ailments and then it also just makes him hit even harder when he has tranquility so uh yeah very interesting character really quickly let me show you uh what tranquility does and then we'll take a look at Todoroki's plus ultra Okay, so here is Tranquility, just so I know I'm not making things up. Prevents receiving critical hits and prevents inflicting critical hits when attacking. So it's very interesting because this, this has the ability to change the meta completely with the fact that now people aren't going to be able to hit as many crits. Like that is very, very good. That changes things so much and is going to change like which characters people end up using because people are now going to choose like high power, high skill impact characters rather than characters that have critical hit rate built in or things like that, or rather than picking critical hit rate memories or things like that. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. I do feel like he is a very good character who could potentially cause the start of a shift in pvp a little bit i don't know if it's going to completely shift pvp but it might you might see some shifts in teams and stuff like that so it'll be cool to see how this impacts the game with that said let's take a look at the plus ultra here is the plus ultra animation courtesy of hydros impact you can see it is clearly just fast four todoroki like no doubt about it it's fast four todoroki so I, I you know we'll call it what we want freezing impact todoroki but we all know what it is right the animation honestly it leaves a little bit to be desired for me. No custom background. Like, I feel like we haven't seen this in a while. Normally, normally it looks a little bit better. Normally it looks a little bit better than this. I mean, I don't know. It's at least clean with the animation for the character. I will say that. The animation for the character is clean. It's a little bit short for me. I would like it to be a little bit longer, but let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please consider going down there, hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. Peace.